Hello and good evening. This everyone. meeting is being recorded. This is our pleasure to invite you to this uh, continuing series of uh, e-Gurukul, where our uh, revered Dr. Uh, P. C. Mahapatra is giving his personal experience uh, as a, a teacher and as a surgeon. Uh, all the uh, skills which he has gained, he wants to transfer it to the next generation. So he is compiling uh, all the recordings and uh, trying to give us the message that this is the best method you can adopt or you can still do better uh, keeping these standards in mind. Now, uh, this is the 13th topic in the continuing series, uh, which will focus on, upon the electrosurgical principles and practices. So the tips and tricks of this whole procedure will be discussed in this particular series by Dr. P.C. Mahapatra. So, sir, uh, we welcome you, and without taking much time, we would uh, uh, request you to please start the session. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Diwan, and the whole team of Juventus uh, for this academic uh, partnership uh, with the gynecologist. And uh, I welcome all my viewers, all my uh, fellow gynecologists across the country for uh, this continuous program of e Gurukul which I'm uh, really uh, stimulated to do it episode after episode uh, after the interest of uh, uh, the gynecologist across the country. I think that's a great thing as a teacher. I'm a very uh, uh, teaching is a passion and I'm a satisfied soul to become a teacher. And uh, by sharing my experiences and all that, I think I will learn many things from the feedback which I got it and all that. So... I welcome uh, all of you to this episode. This is episode 13. I think uh, um, uh, I, I can't remember when uh, episode 20 episodes have been already over. And uh, the main uh, concept is about the surgical skill transfer and solving clinical dilemmas. See, surgery is uh, an art and a science. And the surgical uh, skill to acquire it um, really takes a long, long time. And there is a uh, jo the journey and the, uh, um, the learning curve is much more as we go for more and more of advanced surgery like endoscopic surgery. And therefore, I thought that whatever difficulty I have encountered, whatever risk, whatever problem I have encountered, I think I must uh, transfer to my next generation so that uh, they will evolve in a newer, newer surgeon's in the near future for that. And that's the main purpose for which a series of these events is going on. I'm happy that today is uh, episode 13. Now, this is something, this episode I thought must be something different than the previous episode. The previous episode focuses on the particular uh, specific type of surgery and particular uh, uh, related to the obstetrics and gynecology. But this episode, I felt that this is absolutely important uh, uh, for this episode and uh, believe me uh, it is very close to my heart it is essential for every gynecologist surgeons and uh, I bring greetings from the place of Lord Jagannath and with that let me uh, give my views and opinions on the electrosurgical principles and practice and therefore uh, my fellow gynecologist all of you must uh, agree with me that uh, there is a deficit of knowledge uh, regarding the electrosurgical principles and practice, although uh, this is part and parcel of our surgical procedures, all surgical procedures. So for gynecologists, for surgeons, everything, I think this part, so that uh, I wanted to have a special episode on related to electrosurgical principle and practice to have a basic understanding of this particular concept to clear the fundamentals. So my talk will be divided into two different parts. One first half will be on the principles of electrosurgery and uh, starting from the history till date, what are the different innovations which has given rise? And the second part, I will just um, focus on the practices related to the obstetrics and gynecology and uh, sharing my, my videos, my surgical fields and all that to all of you for that. Well... So therefore, why this episode? This episode is something different because most gynec surgical procedures performed today incorporate 
some form of applied energy. So applied energy is a must following any surgical procedures. Second, electrosurgical device is a part and parcel of energy used by surgeons today. And unfortunately, most of the surgeons, including me, do not fully understand the basic principles of electrosurgery. And they just know that switch on and switch off. They do not know anything about that. And modulating the setting of the generator or its desired tissue effects is not known to most of us, including myself. And limitations in surgeon's knowledge of electrosurgical principles will permit delivery of unintended energy resulting in complications. Over the last three decades, the electrosurgical device has evolved into complex systems as regards safety and efficacy. We want both things. Safety and efficacy must be absolutely, uh, we want it a priority for that. And it is imperative that the contemporary gynec surgeons should have a working knowledge of three different aspects. Energy generation, delivery into the tissues, and the tissue effects. These are the three main aspects which I will just uh, revolve my talk on these particular three aspects. So the principles, electrosurgical principles, my outline of my talk will be starting from the format of history and evolution, the electricity, the basic physics, what is the difference between electrocautery, which is very common, which we know that everything is electrocautery, but there is a difference between electrocautery and electrosurgery, which I want to clarify. And what are the components of the electrosurgery? What are the risks of the electrosurgery? And what are the future? In the next generation, what is the future awaiting us? Now, history and evolution. Starting from Hippocrates, it was known that heat and healing were related to that. So, healing of the wounds is related to heating. And therefore, the electricity was applied or even red hot iron was used to treat some of the ulcers, some of the diseases, and presuming that there is a relationship between heat and healing. The word cautery, which is very common now, is derived from a Greek word called cauterion, meaning a hot iron. And that's hot iron related to the medical or surgical therapy. Way back in 16th century, Dr. William Gilbert first used the term electricity and electricity properties of amber and used it in therapy. And therefore, he will be regarded as a father of electrotherapy, not electrosurgery. Now, two significant discoveries has changed the situation and the philosophy and practice of electrosurgery. First is the recognition of electromagnetic induction by Michael Faraday and Robert Todd, leading to harness and store the electric energy reliably. And from that evolved what is called an electrosurgical generator. Second, the current frequency below 100 Hz, causing muscular contraction in animal experimentation, particularly the frog, known as a Faradig effect. They thought that this frequency will is able to produce a titanic contractions of the muscles, but simultaneously, Morton has proved that this Faradig effect is related to the frequency of current in the household settings. When the high frequency current more than 100 kilohertz or in lux 100,000 hertz, that means cycles per second, pass through the tissues, then there is no spasm, no burn or no pain and the tissue effects are manifested. That is by Arsonava. And these two has led the concept of having an electrosurgical generator or a source and the transmission to the tissues of a high frequency current more than 1 lakh or 100 kilohertz. Well, the second important is a combination of one neurosurgeon and one physicist. Neurosurgeon 
Harvey Cushing, and physicist William Bovis way back in 1920s. They were the first to use the application of electrosurgery in medicine in surgery. And therefore, they will be regarded as the founder of electrosurgery. In a tumor, brain tumor, the Bovi is the main person physicist could generate a source and supplemented the doctor, the neurosurgeon Harvey. And that is the beginning of electrosurgery. And a publication starts and therefore people are very, very enthusiastic after that for that. But unfortunately, they were being criticized and they were being chastised. They were being uh, imprisoned for the undue experimentation. And William Bovis he, at last was, could sell the machine, his patent, at only one dollar. And then became died and a penniless man. That's the history. I think a salute to these two persons, Harvey Cushing and William Bovis, who are the founder of electrosurgery. Since then, in 1970s, the unipolar current was very popular and that benefits and risks were analyzed for that. I remember during my early, early uh, student period or during my early practice in gynecology, we were just unipolar current and all that was that. In 1980s, then came what is known as a bipolar current. And 1990s, the resurgence of the renovations of the different current of bipolar, like the vessel sealer, the advanced bipolar, and many, many such things till today. We are just having a great explosion in the technology. Now, coming to the second important aspect of basic physics of electricity, I know very well all faculties of medicine and gynecologists, they are very poor in mathematics, they are very poor in physics, they are very sound in botany and geology. I know that, that basic physics, they are very afraid of, and mathematics, they can't, don't, they can't calculate also. Invariably, you find a mistake while calculating the EDD also. So, the basic physics, I'm not going to the details of that to confuse you, just to have a clarification of the knowledge and fundamentals, reminder of your pre-medical period. There are various terminology you should understand. What is a current? Current is flow of electrons through a conductor. The electrons flow through the conductor is known as a current and that is expressed in amperes. And what is a voltage? Volt is the force pushing the electrons along a circuit. So if the force which pushes the current or electrons along a circuit is known as voltage. And what is the resistance? Opposition to the free flow of electrons. If it passes through the tissues, there must be some impedance or opposition. This is called resistance. And what is the power? It is an instantaneous energy required per unit time to perform a function, the work. And power is related to the work. The instantaneous energy required per unit time to perform a work is known as power. That is expressed as watts. So the basic electricity, the electrons are the fundamentals, particles of the energy, basic particles of energy. Volts are the power, ohms is the resistance, watts is work, ampere is the current. And this is the age old, very famous law, ohms law. There is a relationship between a current, voltage and resistance. And Ohm's law of beginning is that current equal to voltage by resistance. That means if the voltage is increased, the resistance increases. It is directly proportional. Whereas if the resistance increases, then it is reverse, inversely proportional. To have the desired current, you have to increase the volt. And therefore, the pushing force has to be increased for that to achieve the same thing. And from that implications of the Ohm's law, we held we corroborate with the power, the watts. So what is a watt? Watt is voltage into multiplication by the current equal to V square by R and equal to I square into R. So these are all formula which is related to the volt, resistance and the current and the watt or the work. This is just a simple example. The fundamental, this is 
fundamental elements of electricity, the current, resistance, and voltage, and the relationships are depicted by a water tower. Just as it takes pre pressure to fill the reservoir, voltage is the electromotive force that drives current across an electric circuit. As more fluid or a smaller diameter outlet would require greater pressure, greater current or increased resistance requires higher voltage. So if the pipe is narrow, you kink the pipe, resistance is increased, you have to increase the volt to find out the desired limit for that. And that's the Ohm's law that is very well appreciated by everybody. Now, coming to these electrons, electric current. What are the different types of electric current we know? It is a direct current. One is a direct current, which is a galvanic. It is a unidirectional. In one direction, it goes. And it is used in acupuncture, endotherapy, not in electrosurgery. Pulsed current is a high amount of energy and for a short period. And it is used for stimulating the nerve and muscle. We in electrosurgery use the alternate current. The alternating current, what is an alternating current? It is an oscillation from positive to negative. It is a sinusoidal wave form pattern exchanged bidirectionally and sinusoidally. There is no net gain of electrons at either pole of electric circuit of electrosurgical device. This is an example. The direct current is a unidirectional, whereas the alternative current flows from a positive to negative, and therefore, this one cycle is known as a frequency. One cycle per second is known as a frequency, and that's depicted as Hodge. The, the number of oscillations per second is depicted as what is called a Hodge. And therefore, the alternative current is a very important current used for electrosurgical practice. Now, many people say that we are using radio frequency current. What is the fundamental? What do you understand radio frequency current? Now, remember that in the household, we use less frequency. Say, for example, 60 watts to max 60 watts, less than around 60 watts is the household current. You increase to 100 kilowatts, that's muscle and nerve stimulation suggests. I already told that is the Faradig effect. And this Faradig effect is always below 100 kilohertz. You increase it, less than that, there will be muscle or tetanic contractions of the muscles. You increase muscle and nerve stimulate CGS, and that is used in electrosurgery. I told that in electrosurgery, in the generators, we use up to about 300 to 500,000. That means 300 to 500 kilohertz and therefore in what happens in radio frequency in AM radio and the television the frequency ranges from 550 to 880 and therefore the same electrosurgery in a higher range akin to the 500 kilohertz and to the radium radio or television that's why we know that this is used as a radio frequency current so the frequency, when it is increased to about 300 to 500 kilohertz, similar to the radio or to the television, it is known as a radio frequency current. It's so simple to understand. There is nothing very tough subject for understanding what is radio frequency current. And therefore, the electrosurgical device uses two things. Alternate current, that is oscillating current, and second is a radio frequency current for that. Now, what is the difference between electrocautery versus electrosurgery? Electrocautery, application of direct current to an instrument of high resistance, that is a wire, to produce heat. And this heated wire is applied directly to tissue to destroy it. And that's known as electrocautery. I am reminded of my earlier days in practice. The common surgery, we do the cauterization of the cervix. At that time, the diathermic cautery was now not available. Later on, we see the diathermic cautery. What he used to do, ECC machine, and this machine, there is a filament, and switch on the machine, the filament becomes a red dot. And this red dot filament, we used to just burn the erosion service and do a cauterization. That's the brightest example of electrocautery for that. 
but the depth of penetration and other skip lesions are maximum there in electrocautery and therefore there is a difference it's a red dot red dot filament of rod which is just touched to the tissues but what is electrosurgery electrosurgery is employment of kinetic energy moving in the form of alternate current or radio frequency current transferred into the living tissue and when this high frequency current touches the living tissue there is some effect and the effect is raising the temperature from variable tissues variable temperature from various tissues and this raised temperature has some effect on the tissues which we want in surgery and that temperature which can be modulated to achieve the desired tissue effects that's known as electrosurgery so one thing is that it's a kinetic energy it's an alternative current it is a radio frequency current which is generated from the source electrosurgical device and transferred to the tissues and that can be modulated the electrosurgical device is such designed that they can modulate the type of current the power setting the volt the the mm current strength everything can modulate and that modulation has an effect on different effect on the tissue and that's known as electrosurgery for that now what are the temperature and tissue relationship at what temperatures what tissue effect occurs at 44 degree centigrade tissue necrosis occurs at 70 degree coagulation begins at 90 degree desiccation begins at 100 degree vaporization begins at 200 degree carbonization occurs remember we are not targeting for carbonization we can use if you want a vaporization it must be a higher temperature less little less is desiccation much less is coagulation and tissue necrosis cannot be either not visible macroscopically at 44 degree now there are some visible effect and there are some delayed effects on the tissues so related to the temperature visible effect from 34 to 44 degree we cannot see any visible effect but delayed effect is edema from 44 to 50 again we cannot see a visible effect but necrosis is a delayed effect from 50 to 80 there is a blanching is a visible effect you know the blanching and delayed effect is sloppy you have seen if uh, inadvertent touch of the electric current to the serosa to the peritoneum you see the blanching white thing and all that that is a visible effect but delayed effect is sloughing that area can give rise to sloughing after period of days or weeks 80 to 100 there is a shrinkage of the tissues whereas delayed effect is sloughing 100 to 200 there is a steam popcorn and delayed effect is ulceration and more than 200 carbonization cratering and delayed effect is large crater because the deep infiltration occurs in that so the mechanism is organ various beginning from 34 to 200 either starts from the vasodilatation then disruption of cell metabolism collagen denaturation occurs at 50 to 80 desiccation occurs at 80 to 100 vaporization occurs at 100 to 200 and combustion of tissue and hydrocarbon is seen in more than 200 now apart from this there are variable factors on tissue temperature and what are the factors that affects the tissue temperature and number one is a current if the current is more the tissue temperature will be changing voltage again resistance is a capacity of impedance power density modes of setting of the electrosurgical generator timing at what time slow and long time if you touch it then there is a different effects and electrode also the basic electrode the design of the electrode the shape the density and concentration of current at the tip that also changes the tissue temperatures now surgeon's goal in electrosurgery what are the surgeon's goal in electro what we want number one to attain anatomical dissection we can dissect it with the electrosurgical device main thing at an optimum hemostasis optimum hemostasis is very very important for that one of the time when we used to tie it by this cat god plain cat god tying and tying from the beginning of incision till end and all that suturing 
and now it's very easy that hemostasis. Not only small vessels, but very large vessels can be blocked. Third is resection or ablation of tissue. When we are going to resect it or ablate the tissue, we want to remove it, the tissue. Say, for example, ablation of endometrium or ablation of endometriotic cyst, you just surface it, or a surface endometriotic lesion or resected tissue. I think these electric current are important for that. But least lateral collateral damage, that should be the surgeon's goal. On the one hand, we want these three, but on the other hand, we should not want a collateral damage, either a lateral or a deep infiltration, deep damage for that. And preventing complications arising out of the use of the electrode. Now, therefore, again, there are three specific elements in electrosurgery. All electrosurgical procedures, I think there are three specific elements. First is an electrosurgical generator. Electrosurgical generator is one. This is the electrosurgical generator. Second is an active electrode. Third is a return or dispersible electrode. And to complete the electric circuit, this is essential. So, electrosurgical generator, what is that? I have already told. It is a source delivering radio frequency alternate current. And second, the generator is so designed that it obtains the household 60 hertz and converts it into about 300 or to 5000 kilohertz and ability to tra transfer it to the electrode. Second, it, has an, it should have an ability to modulate in the required conformation according to the needs of the surgeon for that. Second, from the generator, the electricity will flow through a medium and that's an active electrode. And this active electrode to deliver electricity to the tissue of interest from the source. And these electrodes are various types of electrodes which I will just tell you. Then after the electrode touching the body or touching the tissue, it will return it through a dispersible electrode. And therefore, the so-called patient plate, we use it. Patient plate, everybody is conversant with the patient plate. It's a misnomer, don't use the patient plate. It's a ground and plate, where is a better term is a dispersible electrode, return electrode for that. So the current flows from the generator to the tissues and through the body and return back to the dispersible electrode. There is a initially the electrode, the current enters and lifts the body through the dispersible electrode to the generator itself so that the circuit is complete. So all electricity, whatever may be the format, may be unipolar, may be bipolar, whatever it may be, the circuit must be completed. The Energy goes through once and returns back to the same source for that. The circuit must be completed. Now, the electrosurgical generator, I told that the different types of current and modulation should be there for that. So, what are the different types of current? A electrosurgical generator, we want it. One is that a monopolar current. A generator should have a monopolar current output. And I remember. It started beginning from 1970s. It was a monopolar current which was commonly used for that and that, that is having a tissue effect for that. We know the benefits of this, we'll discuss about it. Then came the bipolar current. 1980s, we gained bipolar current for that and that bipolar current, maximum 50 watt. It cannot go more than 50 watt for that. So you do just coagulation with the bipolar and arrest the superficial bleeding for that also. And that's only bipolar. There are some generators at that time which came with only bipolar also, but most of the generator in the earlier phase came with a combination of monopolar and bipolar current. Then came advanced bipolar. What is an advanced bipolar? This is a bipolar having an efficiency of sealing vessels. That's known as vessel sealer. And this is a different component and advanced bipolar is innovation of the bipolar concept. The same bipolar, it's a bipolar current, but it is a 
vessel sealing capacity is there. And sealing zone is formed for that. There are different components on the oil. Then what is an underwater electrosurgical device? We are doing hysteroscopic surgery. So hysteroscopic surgery, we distend the uterus with the fluid. And that fluid medium could be conductive fluid, electroconductive or non-conductive medium for that. So underwater electrosurgical device, in particularly in hysteroscopic surgery like septum or myoma, Initially, we have used the unipolar current, unipolar electrosurgic device. What is known as underwater? Because the current is not disturbed with the water. With the fluid medium, the current acts. And that's known as under, that's why it's known as underwater electrosurgical device. So unipolar means the medium must be different. We cannot use it with the normal saline. We have to use it with a special medium and a glycine is the medium which can be used for that. And we have used glycine for the unipolar say, hysteroscopic procedure. And there's a lot of problem in the glycine toxicity. And therefore, later on, we have shifted from unipolar to bipolar resectoscope and doing the hysteroscopic surgery using the normal saline. Now, there is a lot of evolution of the electrosurgical generator for that. From monopolar, from simple, there are there are from monopolar, bipolar, another time where a vessel sealer came. There are companies which manufactured only vessel sealer, bipolar vessel sealer only. There are companies which manufactured only bipolar also. And now the new generation is combined every components in one unit for the convenience of the surgeon. And now most of the companies, they are manufacturing a new generation combine every components in one unit. Monopolar, bipolar, vessel sealer, and the underwater cautery, either used for the prostate uh, by the urologist or by the, the uh, hysteroscopic procedure by the gynecologist. Now, apart from it, there are some innovations which is beneficial. There is an auto sensor and modulating current. Every current can be modulated. But auto sensing device and there is a tissue impedance feedback. This is a very innovative solution for that because unnecessarily we are not forcing more of current or more of volt for that. With the less current, a desired effect is obtained for that because the machine senses every tissue has got a resistance and the resistance of the tissues varies from one tissue to other. Say, for example, in scar tissue, the resistance is much more. In adipose tissue, resistance is medium. And in vessels, where the fluid is there, resistance is least. And therefore, the tissue impedance varies from one tissue to another. And there is a system in the machine to know what is the tissue resistance, tissue impedance feedback, and accordingly, auto-modulation of the tissues and sending the current, which can be really a rewarding thing for the surgical endeavor and electrosurgical principles. Now, let us go and understand what is a monopolar, what is a bipolar, what is a vessel sealer, and what are the electrosurgical, I think, underwater cord. Monopolar. From the beginning, I am telling that monopolar is a misnomer because I have told that electricity must be with the, all electrical circuits must be technically bipolar because there is a circuit which must be completed for that. So all electric circuits must technically be bipolar. The word monopolar is a misnomer. We are using it monopolar. That means with one pole, that is not possible. Everything is bipolar because the electric current oscillates from electrosurgical generator to the electrode to the surgical site through patient's body into a dispersive or return electrode back to the generator. So this is nothing but the circuit is completed. Here, the bipolar thing. The electric, the body acts as one of the medium in that electricity. That is the only thing in monopolar. And therefore, when the body of the tissue, the whole body is involved in the electric current which passes through the body, there is an increased potential for undesired effects such as burns and consequences of stray electric currents for that. And therefore, the very importance of the dispersive electrode for that. Remember, when the active electrode touches the body, electricity is delivered to the tissues. 
the strength of current is maximum. And when in the return or dispersive electrode, this what, that's what is called a dispersive, the current strength is diluted when it is dispersed in the body and enters into the dispersible pad. And therefore, the length, strength of the current is minimized so that there is no burns. And that complete circuit is therefore, it is a misnomer. It is a technically, it's a bipolar thing. And this is what is there. In monopolar electrosurgery, current flows from the electrosurgical generator. This is the electrosurgical generator to an electrode. This is an electrode which touches the body to the site to achieve the tissue desired effects. And then the current moves and the current moves here the current moves to the dispersive electrode and enter this dispersive electrode and then back and enters into the electrosurgical device. This way the circuit is completed. And that is the principle of what we call it as a monopolar. Because this name was there, it is we are using it. You see, this is a machine. This is a, uh, this is a, a new generation of electrosurgical generator by KLS Martin. You can see there are two bipolar, two unipolar, and this is a, a computerized machine. We can adjust as per the general need of ours. We can increase or decrease the strength of the current, the wattage, the cutting, or the coagulation current. And from there, it is going to the, I think, the uh, foot pedal. This is the foot pedal, the foot pedal. This is the electrode. And this electrode is the enters into the current, enters into the body. They touch the site of the surgery. And this has a different pattern of the electrode, a needle, then a ball electrode, to the flat electrode, to the scalpel. And this is what is, I will again point out that this is known as tweezer. A forceps which is known as tweezer. This has a significance because if you use a small pointed one, the current is focused on that particular aspect. It will not damage much more. And these are all laparoscopic used two things. One is the, the uh, high frequency needle and another is where uh, 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 you can use a, um, the incision over the desired tissues for that. So these are some of the electrosurgical monopolar electrodes. Now what is a bipolar? The active and dispersive return electrode are components of the same instrument. The body is bypassed. You catch with the instrument. There is an active and there is the, it catches. It catches the tissues and then through the other, other portion of the electrode, it comes back. It is the same electrode, active and dispersive return electrode or components of the same instrument. Current densely identical at both the electrodes. Same thing in contrast to the monopolar where the active and the dispersible electrode, the current, there is a difference in that. And only the tissue grasped by the electrode is the part of the body that is involved. And therefore, this is very, very safe in comparison to the monopolar. But there is also a chance of lateral spread, depending on the, the type of <clears throat> the what you use it, the duration, the location of the uh, electrode where you are using it. The lateral sp spread is also there. So this is one an example compare between the bipolar and monopolar. In bipolar electric surgery, the current flows from the electrosurgical generator into a two pool. Say this is one, the current flows through one prong and then to the tissues, you catch a two pooled instrument through the intervening tissues and then back and then back into the other pranks for that. Whereas in the monopolar, what happens? It goes through the, through the electrode and directly through the tissues, it comes and then it uh, passes through the um, dispersible electrode and then come back for that. Now, you see, what common things we use it. These are all bipolar forceps. And the left side, I can find that there's a red forceps. The stickiness, the material is concerned in such a way that it doesn't stick. And in laparoscopic procedure, this is one of the example of the uh, Kissinger forceps of Marlap where it is mainly a bipolar. The two prongs are there and uh, it is connected to the bipolar cable and set 
strength of current designed by the equipment and then this delivers this graft the tissue and the current only flows through that tissues it doesn't traverse through that the other side the right side is the robi bipolar by starch and these are there are many indigenous preparations where this bipolar were used long since we have for number of years we are using this also to arrest bleeding to hemostasis for various reasons in laparoscopic procedure as well as in conventional open procedures these two bipolar can be used for that and therefore this bipolar is relatively safer than the monopolar only thing is that anatomically you must find out the tissues vulnerable tissues closer to the bowel closer to the ureter you must be very cautious about it so what are the advantages of bipolar over monopolar it's a reliable method of occluding and sealing vessels vessel sealing it's a very good vessel sealer can limit the amount of affected tissue limited area of thermal spread produces less smoke monopolar ka just more of smoke can work under saline or non electrolyte solutions in the surgical field in normal saline we can use it hysteroscopic resection <coughs> and lastly potentially elevates cross interference with implanted devices say for example a pacemaker or the brain or spinal thing like parkinsonism we use different devices for that and of course the monitors we use a monitor in the ot that is disturbed by monopolar but in bipolar it is not very disturbed because the current bypasses the body only the tissues which you hold it with that grasper is being affected for that now what do you mean by advanced bipolar advanced bipolar is otherwise known as a vessel sealer the principles are a high power but low voltage remember it's a very low voltage but high power is there and in addition the mechanical compression of the tissue and coaptation of the tissue jockers by the instrument you just grasp it and mechanical compression of a vessel what it causes the fluid will not be there only the tissues and the vessel vessel wall will be there for that there is a mechanical compression of the tissue and the denaturation of the proteins the collagens the elastin occurs and forms a reliable sealing zone on either side that is the main principle and least lateral spread least local heat these are the desirable thing as a surgeon i wanted for that so in addition this is the principle of all vessel sealers and there are sealers with mechanical cotter and here what is the advantage you don't need to have a, another after coagulation say for example in mono, in the bipolar marlap which i have some simple bipolar you coagulate the tissues and again a laparoscope remove it again introduce it through the uh, or other port with the scissor and cut it here the mechanical cotter so it saves time and convenient so after sealing you just press it mechanical cotter will be there also or sealer with the cotter the shear we call it as a shear and this is an innovation of indian companies i must say that india genius is indigenous they formed a shear i remember the alan company and uh, uh, some of the many other companies like tb and other are manufacturing shear affordable for the indian indian setup and that seals as well as cuts the tip cuts the mechanism here is that i was just telling the various engineers of the different companies long back 10 years back why are you not using this uh, current you have an auto sensing device you have a electrosurgical generator which can modulate current so you know the sealing is complete after sealing is completed coagulation is complete it jumps from coagulation mode to the cutting mode and automatically cut occurs this machine senses for that but they were afraid that the sealing the by cutting the sealing may not be appropriate they are working and still they are working on it the shear is an example where you grasp it with the prongs of the bipolar uh, forceps either open or laparoscopy and coagulate it and at the tip the tip the current strength is maximum the density of the current is more so therefore you just retract it and just place it on the tip the tip cuts it and that's known as a concept of shear so that the different equipments are not necessary with the same instruments 
you coagulate and cut it with the tip and that is known as a shear. There are various trade nomenclature. Various companies give a various names for the vessel sealer. The concept is same. The vessel sealer, the concept I told that is same. They give a different trade nomenclature. Say for example, Gyrus. They said that we have got a plasma kinetic technology. Alst technology for that. Valilab say that they are a ligasure technology. They are the pioneers. Valilab, ligasure technology. Ethicon, they say that we have got Ensil technology. RB tells that they have got a biotechnology. KLS Martin says that we have got a silsef technology or silsef current. And Alan tells that they are also telling that yes, we have to compete with them. They have a Scalcott technology in that sequence. So these are all trade nomenclature and a patent. The main but main purpose is to obtain reliable sealing zone. That is the main concept. And therefore I have told that it is a low voltage, high power and compressive force which is responsible for the vessel sealing. And tissue impedance, it is also accompanied by tissue impedance feedback. So that automatically auto-regulation or modulation cannot happen without tissue impedance feedback. So all the new generation, all these have a tissue impedance feedback in their electrosurgical generator. So ladies and gentlemen, all gynecologists, this is a very important instrument, don't compromise. And quality is a major thing for that. And although this combination of the instruments, the cost-effective part is also there. I will request, I will appeal all the company people for the benefit of gynecologists, have a separate price. You can hire the price for the surgeons, neurosurgeons and other. For gynecologists, you have a special uh, price for that. And it depends on the bargaining capacity of the you people and the company people. I'm not going in between them. But this is important, a reliable ceiling zone we wanted for that. And auto-sensing or modulating, auto-modulating for that. Now, when bipolar came, in fact, way back in 1990s, at that time, the bipolar used to give a delivery voltage of about maximum 50. And there is no auto-sensing. There is no tissue impedance technology for that. So I was also thinking that while doing a hysterectomy, I will use with the bipolar rather than suturing it. And uh, one of my students, I asked, uh, Dr. Purohit is there. He asked, he told that, sir, I'm using it. And just he has published, he told that I will publish in the international journal the first uh, suture bipolar. And with the same age-old bipolar, with the small tips, gradually he did some of the cases. I also did at some, I differed from him. I told that I have experience of that too. Hysterectomy I had done in vaginally, but it took me four hours. Why piece by piece I did it. And for, at that time I was asking, I was consulting the different engineers of the pharmaceutical company that you increase the wattage and the power and make something on the vessel ceiling zone and increase the length of the electrode. And therefore, we can do easily within that. But now it is possible, the ceiling zone. So the basic surgical philosophy is that nameless vessels to be coagulated. Vessels having a name to be sutured. So which vessel to be sutured, which vessel to be coagulated. So you are coagulating, you are giving an incision in the abdomen, small vessels which doesn't have a name to be coagulated. But a vessel which has a name, say uterine artery has a name, that has to be sutured. Now, yesterday's contraindications are today's indications. And therefore, when a vessel sealing device has a capacity of sealing zone of more than 7 millimeter vessel, diameter vessel, uterine artery cannot be, uterine artery is not an exception, it can be sealed with that. So, 7 millimeter, they have a capacity of sealing 7, those arteries with 7 millimeter vessels diameter can also be sealed with the efficiency, with effectivity. And therefore, there is an innovation of suture versus sutureless. Whether future is without with suture or future without suture, you are the best choice for that. Now, this is a bipolar vessel sealer. This is an example. This is an open bipolar. This instrument is uh, somehow designed by me and I have given complex. 
that yes, you do it in a pistol like 15 centimeter little cord so that I can use it in abdominal hysterectomy and vaginal hysterectomy. And Martin, this is a Martin design which he does. And with the same hand instruments, hand operated, hand operated, uh, the, uh, the power setting. And along with that, a cotter is there. Now they have expanded to 5 millimeter. And earlier, this was used as a mark clamp. This is a long, about 2.8 to 3 centimeter electrode. And these are two designs. One is with cable, another is without cable. Without cable, long years we have used it. And with cable now, IQ design. They have increased the cost and selling. The effectivity is more for that. These are some of the examples. How it, the cut is there and how the mark lamp seals it only. There is no cutter. You have to cut it with the scissor for that. And this is another instrument by Martin called IQ. Cut IQ. That means you just, just uh, uh, coagulate it and then mechanically cut it. You can see the cutter which it comes and you press it and then the cutter cut tissue with that. This is mechi But the only disadvantage is that the length of the electrode is less. I have suggested them to make the length of the electrode longer and therefore they are trying on that also. This is same thing contemplation, open versus laparoscopy. Laparoscopy, this is the mechanical cutter, this is the plug and uh, the pedal instead of a leg pedal, the hand operated switch is there and these are all 5 millimeter instruments with vessel sealer cutter is there for that. You connect it, they have a different seal zone, every company has a different form, a G1, G2, G3 by Martin, Alan has got a L1, L2, L3, L4 and L5 but basic principle is that the lowest current has to be used for that. Lowest current with the desired active. And this is one example how this uh, uh, vessel sealer helps both in a case of open as well as in a case of laparoscopy. And this is a, an example where I'm given this uh, uh, 5mm. And the tip can be act as a, as a dissector also. This is a set of Alance equipment. This is Alance equipment, laparoscopy and open. And this laparoscopy and open the 5 millimeter, this has a shear. That means you can use it and the tip cuts it and you can dissect it. The shape is like a dissector for that. What is an underwater cautery? Electrosurgical application in operative hysteroscopy, unipolar with non-electrolyte conducting medium and glycine, bipolar with normal saline for that. And see, these are all resectoscopes. There are two types. Earlier, we are using the unipolar resectoscope. This is an example of unipolar Collins knife and unipolar the loop. And now substituted with the bipolar loop and bipolar Collins knife. You can see the two inserts, the difference between the unipolar and the bipolar thing. And the electrode, the resectoscope is also different in the both the cases. And this is one example of, G, the tip. And you can find the tip of loop is connected with one. This is a bipolar. And here, the bipolar resectoscope is also different. And this is an assembly with the um, um, Collins knife with that. And the cable is there attached to that. And in contrast, the unipolar is something different. The unipolar, the two prongs are there. And the same Collins or the loop can be inserted with that. And this is one example difference. There is no connection between that. The current flows from one to another. And this is uh, the difference between the two loops, unipolar and bipolar loops. And the resectoscope are also different. The, we have now shifted from the unipolar to bipolar in view of glycine toxicity. For the safety of the patient, we are converting, we are changing the uh, protocol. And this is how, at the end, the bipolar as well as the unipolar for that. And uh, this is the cable. Now, newer generation of electrosurgical generators I have already told all components in one unit, auto sensor, modulator of energy and tissue impedance feedback. This is important for that. And this is known as adaptive generators. In future, what will, in which direction again we'll know, go, we do not know. But at present, these are the newer generation of electrosurgical generator for that. So new generation multifunctional uh, adaptive generators. This is one. This is one, you can see, 
uh, India Genius is indigenous, Alan's multifunctional generator. They have got a different setting. They have got a skull cut current from L1 to L5. They have got two bipolar and one unipolar um, um, socket which is involved. And you can adjust the current also. The minimum current we should give it for that. And they have adjusted. With L1, L2, maximum all the vessel sealing can be done also. Don't use the L5 for that also. And only in a case of underwater cautery, the, the voltage, the power can be used long. Our voltage should be around 150 to 180. But otherwise, uh, about from 100 to 150 current in vessel sealer is enough for that also. In contrast, only 40 to 60 in an open uh, is uh, uh, required for that. So this is an adoptive generators designed by the few company for that. And this is what is a KLS Martin's newer machine. They have designed it, they have improvised. Here there are two, uh, two bipolar, two unipolar sockets is there with the patient plate. The patient plate also you can need, you can know if it patient plate is perfect, you can see the green signal. Otherwise it will be red. And you can adjust this is totally computerized programming can be done also. You can yourself do the program and it's not very difficult and uh, you can use it. And this is the pedal patient uh, foot plate, foot plate where it can be remote also. There are, there are the remote foot plate, the other side is remote and this is the patient plate. This is important because the right application, the good right patient plate in right application in the right place is important also. That's very important. You should be, the main surgical philosophy is that you should place it over a muscular area, not over the bony area, not over the irregular area, and not over the scar area, and closer to the surgical field. You can see this, this uh, when you raise it, the, it is a red, red part is coming, auto-sensing device. And when the, it is completely uh, intact, normal, it comes as a green signal for that. And all these have a same procedures for that. Now, electrodes. Coming to the electrodes, it is different in open and vaginal hysterectomy, laparoscopy and hysteroscopy. Newer and changing designs can be there for that also. Now, coming to the tissue effects and the waveforms. The waveforms, there is a continuous waveform versus interrupted waveforms. The cut and coagulation are really misnomer. It is from the Bobby's time and William Harvey. Bobby's has designed that and named it as cut and coagulation. But in fact, it are all electromagnetic wave, tissue effects bearing on the waveforms. Say, for example, what is a cut? Cut is a low voltage and it's an uninterrupted current. It's a continuous current and alternate current. And about 100% of the time, it is on. So the total amount of current is more on a particular time period, whereas the voltage is low. And when we come to the coagulation mode here, in the coagulation mode, coagulation mode is a high voltage. Voltage is high, but the coagulation, what happens? 6% of the time, the current is on. 94% of the time, the current is off. And therefore, the total amount of current is less, but the voltage to compensate it to Ohm's law, the voltage must be there. And what is a blend? Blend, don't think that it is a mixture of this uh, continuous versus interrupted current for that. It is the timing which is important. How much time the current is on, how much time the current is off, and accordingly we level blend 1, blend 2, and blend 3. Not a mixture of these two waveforms. Blend 1, 50% of the time it is on, 50% of the time it is off. Blend 2, 40% is on, 60% is off. Blend 3, 25% is on, and 75% is off. So as we go and increase the off time, we know that the voltage is gradually increasing for that also. So that is the difference between the waveforms and misnomer between the cut and the coagulation form for that. It's not moving. Yeah. Now, what are the then go to the tissue effects? What are the tissue effects? Tissue main there are tissue effects like vaporization, desiccation, and fulguration. And we have got two modes: non-contact mode or a contact mode. In a non-contact mode, in a cut or a continuous current, there occurs vaporization. In contact mode, there is a desiccation. In coagulation mode, interrupted current, 
we want the fulguration in the non contact mode and desiccation in the contact mode whatever it may be the tissue effects varies from vaporization fulguration and desiccation at the tissues by the electrode for that so these tissue effects these are some of the electrodes which i have shown it earlier also the tissue the electrodes the tip is different and depending on the tips manipulation of the electrodes tissue effects are variable if you find a needle electrode the needle the density of current is maximum then a flat then a flat or a bulb i think these are the difference that the tissue effects are the very important for manipulation of the electrodes the electrodes design the uh, the tissue effects are more so more concentrated current will be there in the tip and waveforms are also different different waveforms have the different effect the cutting waveforms or a coagulation waveform or a blend waveform they are the different and size of electrodes is also important speed of incision speed of incision i think the fast versus slow incision in the surgery surgery there is a difference in the effect for that also and timing how much time the electrodes is touching the tissue that is also important the effect is variable for that now what are the risks of electro surgery i have explained the physics starting from the history to the physics to the different components three components i have just elaborated focusing on the electro surgical device and the electrodes and the patient plate what are the risks of electro surgery the electro surgical burns there could be a direct burn or uh, suppose you grasp a tissue which is not desirable and you apply current there is a direct burn electro surgical and in the monopolar as i have already told if the defect in dispersible electrode is there the burn on the skin at the site of the dispersible electrode will be there for that and apart from it direct coupling capacitance and capacitance coupling more common in laparoscopic surgery for that and insulation failure insulation failure in the laparoscopy these three are more important because they touch with the different instruments or form a capacitance of storing energy and transmitting through the other equipment for that also and the lateral spread even if it's a vessel sealer even if it can sell least lateral damage but still there is a lateral spread is there and contact to local tissue the local tissue is heated and therefore there is an apprehension of the surgeon we have also faced that there is some effect on the the, the heated tissue if it touches the normal tissue normal healthy organ then there could be some possibility of damage and transmission of the heat now viewers the second part i have completed within whole one hour about the principles the second part about the electro surgical practice in obstetrics and gynecology what are the practice what are the procedures we do it abdominal either in cesarean or in gynec procedure it needs to have a cutting dissection hemostasis and more often malaceous hysterectomy myomectomy radical surgery in radical surgery now no sutures is being used everything with that you can do a ventectomy you can do everything with that the vessel sealer for that and hysterectomy also everything excepting the valve fixes and we do everything with that parietal lesions like hernia repair parietal tumor like scar endometriosis and other parietal tumor and this is very very important for that and valvo vaginal valvo surgery is benign and malignant vaginal surgeries all types of vaginal may be small may be may be major may be minor for that we are using cervical commonly cervical erosion cauterization Uh, the electro cautery i think electro diathermy cauterization of the cervix to the uh, large loop excision to the uh, the uh, conization and everything and uterine vaginal hysterectomy the predominance of this surgery is vaginal hysterectomy sutureless hysterectomy has become a norm today when abolishing the uh, the uh, sutures and of course in pelvic organ prolapse pelvic organ prolapse there is a very in a, initially people were afraid of using the electricity over the bladder surface of the bladder surface of the bladder or vital structures for that but bipolar superficial bipolar coagulation with a auto sensing device i think auto fix up in that as soon as the grasp the tissue the current is on and automatically you need not have a patient i think foot plate or any uh, hand switch for that so these are all giving a clear picture or uh, the clarity 
of the uh, tissues will be there if the blood is not there. In laparoscopy, you cannot do a laparoscopy procedure without the application of energy and more so in electrosurgical device. All forms of laparoscopy procedure involve either a monopolar or a bipolar with the same electrode and designs may be variable, but it can be done in vessel sealer. Now is the norm for that also. And of course, hysteroscopy procedure, I've already told, the hysteroscopy procedures, you cannot do it without an energy source and therefore the bipolar or monopolar underwater cautery is a must for that. Now let's have a glance on that. This is a case of caesarean. Just I'm talking here, the caesarean, an abdominal incision and a normal, I think the patient bed is already there. Now here, the ideal preventive measures is that you identify vessels and then coagulate and then come in. If at all you are not that, be very cautious. The tweezer, the importance of the very tweezer is important. Don't use the conventional uh, tissue grasper and uh, Therefore, the, if the width is more, the tissue, more tissue is damaged for that. And identify the particular tissue, catch hold of the bleeders, and then do it. And therefore, do that procedure. The risk is that don't over cauterize it. Don't use more of cautery over the fat layer. And therefore, if you cauterize and carbonization occurs, this is frequency, the future healing will be defective for that. And therefore, you can cut the rectus sheath with the electricity and very and just be cautious that you don't uh, you avoid the skin and if it is closer to the skin and applying the current later on we find that the skin there is a spread over the skin and the healing will be defective in that be very careful when using this this you can use it with the is a unipolar but you can use it the the bipolar also but you have to change the equipments with the same electrode i'm using that with only tweezer to coagulate if there is a bleeding or there not. So the parietal wall earlier where you used to tie it with the sutures or it's a bloody surgery, immediately the people say that you just don't care, carry on the procedure and then after the delivery, after, after the baby, when it comes to stitching, everything will be sealed. That's true. But unnecessarily, the field becomes very bloody and I personally, I don't like that. And this acts as a dissection as well as a hemostasis for that. So this monopolar current is acting as a dissector as well as for the monopolar current uh, for a coagulation and all that. So this is one example where in every cesarean you can use it for that. Now, this is another example where first case of cesarean, I have incised it with the scalpel blade and then deeper layer I have gone for that. Now here is an electrode, a pencil where I have adjusted with a soft cut. That means you can cut the skin with also that and there is no problem in the healing process for that. So you can you can cut it with the electrosurgical equipment for that. And therefore, it's a electrosurgical equipment with a soft cut mode and we can do it and go below that. Again, one thing I will tell in seizure and there is a question that yes, the baby in seizure will be affected. No, there is no question of uh, transmitting the current to the baby for that if you do it with that. And this is an abdominal hysterectomy. It's again an abdominal hysterectomy with a monopolar reusable pencil. This is a reusable pencil. And you cut it as demonstrated, the incision of all that, incision of the abdomen. And you can see how, how with perfect hemostasis we can do the election. And it's a big uterus of about 26 weeks. And we're doing with that. And inside, we're using they have designed this Marcel, Marcel, which is a hand operated, hand seal, five millimeter, and it is seals and automatically a mechanical cotter. You press it and the mechanical cotter will be there and sealing will be very, very important for that. And uh, this is a tube which has been sealed with the same instrument, the cutting is applied for that. And that becomes very easy that we don't apply any suture for the hysterectomy from the beginning till end and all that. And if there is a if there is a bleeding, you can just coagulate it and coagulation and cutting can be done for that. And this is a very useful instrument. With one instrument, you can do the whole procedure of abdominal hysterectomy with this, this uh, Marcel 10 millimeter, which is already designed by me long years. And it's a very cute instrument. I love it. 15 centimeter length, acting like a pistol and firing it. And I told they have not yet marketed. I don't know why they are not marketing this. 
Uh, mainly they have raised the price for that. Maybe it's too very soon they will they will go for that. But it's a very good instrument. The missing vessel filling capacity is much more, and we can use this. And you can see that how future is without suture, and must be very very cautious about this. So, and it's a very simple procedure for that. Don't use unnecessary suture for that. So in the era where HIV patients or HBSAG patients, it's very important. And particularly, there is no difference between expert and the novice because you have to see the power setting and just apply it, catch it and apply it. No, no technique is required for a good approximation and a stitch. The stitch must be very good and all that. No creaking, creaking side. There must be bleeding and all that. And this completes the procedure for that. So then this is a, a uterovesicle full of peritoneum, which is being dissected by using this uh, soft cut mold. And, uh, and uh, this is being dissected because there could be a small twig, which uh, uh, by a seizure, if you dissect it, there could be a problem. But it's absolutely bloodless. And then the uterine. Earlier, I say that, yes, I, I was telling that yesterday's contraindications is today's indication. And here, the uterine can be coagulated very well. Even large vessels can be coagulated. But be very cautious. You just apply in three different places and cut in the middle so that unnecessary blood will not come from the other side and bleeding will be reassured. And you can again seal it completely if there is any problem for that. But don't go more laterally. Don't go more laterally and just fire it it will be then, you can see the uterine artery, you can see the uterine artery, you can see and coagulate again, have a second attempt for that. And uh, this is how, this is the main vessel to be coagulated, is the descending cervical branch. Now the descending cervical branch has to be kept in mind and that that is the descending cervical branch. You again take, tackle this and before going to the mechanodes, before going to the mechanodes, and then this could be very important and avascular surgery for the, using the vessel sealer for that. And uh, uh, you can avoid many, there are many, many merits of it also. Only thing is that don't go more lateral. Don't go more lateral. Closer to the uterus is always the basic principle of all philosophy. May it be your abdominal or laparoscopy or vaginal. Closer to the tissue and saving of the, con saving of the, uh, the, uterine and other tissues from the tissue, SHAVI and you're saving it. My teacher was always telling that saving, that means closer to the tissue. This is the, this is the um, Mackinac's ligament, Mackinac's ligament which is coagulated before going to the uh, opening and this is all, all around the uterus. We can have it clearly, we can see and uh, then open it. Now with that, the vault is open. Now you can see the opening of the vault. And again, don't cut it. With the same thing, you can have a very good cut so that there will not be any bleeding from the vaginal vault. And this can be completed procedure for that. And, and then after that procedure, you just have to fix the vault with the suture. Otherwise, suture is not necessary for that. And therefore, whole thing can be completed within a very short time. With a very short time, this can be done for that. And if at all there is any bleeding, you can apply the small tweezing, small tweezer. You can apply this uh, non-sticky forceps with the bipolar and complete the procedure for that. Now, this is another case where the abdominal hysterectomy is being done with the shear. With the shear. Again, this is another equipment I have already told that is a shear automatically cutter. It's not a mechanical cutter and uh, it is used uh, with that is a shear which is being devised either Alan, uh, people are manufacturing these and uh, for open as well as for laparoscopy procedure. And uh, this is a to demonstrate the different types of the procedure, surgical application. I am just, this is again a five millimeter thing and you can use it, it's known as a bisector and giving a current of skull, skull, cut, skull cut current and uh, that, and you go and absolutely there is a, uh, very good hemostasis in that and cutting is also there. The tip cuts 
and that's the procedure where the bi this is known as a bi bisector and the bisector is uh, used for that and the whole procedure can be performed with the same uh, instruments there is no need of suturing for that also and whenever there is a bleeding you just coagulate the bleeding with that i think uh, the these uh, um, shears are available in india uh, the i know that i've used the alans uh, shear and uh, pv shear for that both are very good for that and uh, very cost effective for that and the same procedure you can go it on the other side and coagulate the uterine artery for that is a very handy instrument and very effective instruments the bisector which you uh, you can see that there is absolutely bloodless for that and the whole thing can be done on the other opposite side and uh, uterus can be delivered it and after that the uh, the sutures uh, mainly with the support of the vault on the either side and the angle is most important otherwise from the beginning to end <laughs> we do not use any any suture for that this is another case where we're using this uh, uh, parietal lesions parietal lesions is a scar endometriosis and see otherwise we'll have to suture suture and suture every time for that the bleeding is so much in that that we can use it with the uh, bipolar unipolar current and with the tweezer and just cutting with the unipolar current uh, and uh, dissecting it all around and the rectus seed and therefore it's a wide dissection is necessary in a case of scar endometriosis and uh, just a position after that uh, healthy tissue must be differentiated from that and you see their cutting is very easy and uh, uh, bloodless if you use this electrosurgical device and then uh, you can suture it as desired for that so this is one example of scar endometriosis and this is i remember when uh, bipolar was not available or i didn't have a chance to avail the bipolar in laparoscopy long before when unipolar was came with the with the dissector i was using this and that's for i thought that i will i will never forget my past even if they are bad even if there is involved in that i have learned from that and therefore just to focus your attention this is important erythrolysis is parietal wall erythrolysis can be done for that now there are various instruments bipolar you can use it the vesicular you can use it the harmonic you can use it and uh, if there are no vascular you can use it only with the seizure also you can do an erythrolysis but this type of adhesions you cannot use only seizure the coagulation is necessary for that this is a, a no more we are using the bipolar unipolar in that now then uh, we come to the lap hysterectomy with the seer again it is a lap hysterectomy done with the seer this is the seer by the alan method the alans uh, uh, seer where there were the two designs one with the dissector another with the normal seer and you can see the whole thing and uh, this you coagulate it and then the tip you remove it and the tip cuts and when you retract at the tip it cuts and is absolutely bloodless for that and uh, this is how you go step by step on infundibula pelvic and then the uterine and then the lower part and then the vaginal vault and complete the procedure of a lap hysterectomy for that and in uterine you must be very very cautious that be very close to the uterus because even if they say that yes it's a absolutely uh, least lateral spread but we know that there could be some lateral spread for that and the ureter is the main organ which is likely to be affected for that so this is how we do this with the uh, shear this is another uh, procedure with the lap bipolar this is the lap bipolar this is not a vessel vessel sealer this is the kissinger bipolar kls martin bipolar you can use the robi bipolar also or any other bipolar i have used this bipolar instrument conventional bipolar and with the bipolar and the caesar you do this hysterectomy and when you have to cut it with that the mechanical cut is not there only that to seal it and all that but this is also very very familiar with the gynecologist old gynecologist who are really conversant with this type of thing they are really happy with that because we know comparison between this bipolar instrument versus harmonic harmonic the cutting is good but the hemostasis is not akin to the bipolar and bipolar is bipolar still today bipolar has a merit in the hemostasis for that and how 
we are dissecting the uterocycle fold of peritoneum, the other side, and then going deeper and deeper and then uh, finishing the procedure. So in laparoscopy, energy is important. Without electrosurgery, you can't do anything for that also. You cannot see uh, in open, you can seal it, you can uh, suture it and all that. But in here, you cannot do the procedure without the use of electricity for that. So this is part and parcel of all endoscopic surgeons for that. Now, this is another using the Martin Marsil, where the cutter is there. And uh, here, with a simple instrument, you just proceed and then and then use the cotter. And with that cotter, you just cut it. So the cutting, coagulation and cutting in the same instruments is a benefits, benefits to all these. And this is a particularly useful for the uh, laparoscopic procedure. This is again a unipolar current, a unipolar cutting current <laughs> with a uh, uh, scapula. In a case of TLH, while doing the opening the vault, vaginal vault, this is important. And this is, we can use it for that. And this is, again, for open bipolar, we are using it. And particularly this, I will give an example of using a radical surgery. This is a, this is a, a bleeding, arrest bleeding, this uh, uh, non-stick forceps in any type of bleeding, parietal or inside, that can be used for that. But this cannot be used for a, a vessel sealer for that. You cannot use it. But in addition, if there is a bleeding, you can uh, take ahead of this particular thing if there is a bleeding on a particular area. And uh, this, uh, non, this should be non-sticky. Many times it should be non-sticky. And again, this is auto-adjusted so that when uh, as soon as you apply it, the current is on. And as soon as you just release it, the current is off for that. And that is the main advantage. This is an example where you can see in a in this particular case, I'm showing one radical case when a verdim cystectomy, where verdim cystectomy, it is the application and all that, and uh, the gland, the lymphadenectomy, how with the bipolar. My friend Sushil Giri is very, very conversant with this type of electrosurgical procedures. No more, he is using any seizure and all the procedures he does with that. And the, apart from the uh, laparoscopic uh, procedure, the open, particularly for radical, nothing has to be used for that. This is another, again, a case of adenomyoma, adenomyomectomy, localized adenomyoma. This hook, unipolar hook is applied. There is a little smoke is more, as I have already told, smoke is more in a case of the unipolar than the case of bipolar, but you cannot cut it with other instruments. This is a very effective way of cutting and then the whole tissue can be delivered, can be cut with the energy source. And with the energy source, without this energy source, this much part of the localized adenomyomectomy. Adenomyomectomy is not a very difficult procedure, but it should be selected. Case selection, many or many times it is confused with the myoma and uh, while cutting it comes out to be adenomyoma. And here the, the cutting should be there. It should be a deep cutting and whole of the myoma, adenomyoma tissue has to be removed and uh, uh, the, the suturing is a little intricate but we can do a good suturing and oppose that. And there is a place for laparoscopic adenomyomectomy also. And the same procedure, we can use it with the myoma with the same uh, monopolar current, with the hook, we give an incision, then with the myoma separator, with either with the myoma screw or with the tenaculum, we just go through the proper cleavage and then it can be removed for that. It's much more easier than adenomyomectomy. Now, this is uh, another case. This is another case uh, where uh, uh, the salpingectomy is being done and uh, here, it is a case of interstitial pregnancy. It is a case of isthmic pregnancy. The isthmic pregnancy is a very vascular thing and isthmic and ampullary pregnancy. And this with the normal bipolar, it's not a vessel sealer, with the normal bipolar, the sealing is adapted for that. Remember, the main procedure, you just apply the current and there is a bubble. And as soon as it is a white and the bubble seizures, you know that the current, the coagulation is complete. It has no auto sensing mechanism, and therefore just press it. And as soon as you can see the bubble, the bubble disappears and it becomes dry. And it, as soon as it is dry, the bubble disappears. You know that that is the end point for that. That is the, that is the trick of uh, 
the completion of the procedure for that. And that is important in interstitial pregnancy. The isthmic pregnancy or interstitial pregnancy, it can be by only that uh, uh, simple bipolar. The vessel cell is not necessary for that. Now, this is again a large uh, adolescent uh, um, um, girl having a large uh, ovarian tumor. And this is uh, found to be a big ovarian cyst, preferably uh, later on I found that it's a par ovarian cyst. So here, what happens? There is a, a lot of vessels you coagulate it before uh, giving a incision. And uh, after that, you just deflate. Because it's about uh, 32 weeks size, I've just deflated it. And uh, then uh, I go step by step for that. Once I find the seed, you identify the cyst wall and then seed. And these are some of the vessels which is very important. Number one is a good cleavage. Is a right cleavage you go and the vessels as and when required, you can just coagulate with that. See that uh, I'm just with the traction and all that with the same cleavage. I'm just, and if there is a bleeding, I'm just applying this bipolar. And this bipolar, simple bipolar, in a particularly where there is a bleeding, you apply it and do the procedures and complete the procedures. So these are there are very there. That's why I told that in all types of laparoscopic surgery, uh, this electrosurgical procedure uh, is a must. And without this power, you don't have any power of endoscopy. So therefore, I say that power in endoscopy, power in surgery is very very important now in the current generation. In the with the advancing knowledge and with the advancing technology, I think this is a part and parcel of all endoscopic surgeons. Endoscopic, exoscopic, hysteroscopic, whatever it may be, this is an important thing. And uh, there are many merits and demerits, which I've already told. But try to understand the basic, basic thing about that. And therefore, things will be very clear. You don't have to go for a switch on and switch off mode. You have to go a little more deep into it and uh, just apply the force, apply the current, uh, bipolar current in particular. Don't apply more. This is a carbonization which is occurred and uh, uh, this to be avoided for that. But remember that when there is a bleeding, the bleeding has to be addressed with that. And the main thing is the parover and cyst, you have to be very, very cautious about the cleavage. The right cleavage will give rise to less of bleeding and unnecessary carbonization is not uh, required for that also. So at the base and the hilum, the problem occurs at the separation and all that. Take care of that in the hilum and separate it and uh, things will be okay. And absolutely, she will have an uh, uneventful post-operative period and the uh, patient will be discharged after that. And uh, this is the last part. We can use it with that and use always with the uh, uni bipolar current. Don't use the unipolar here. And then the uh, rest of the part, you, just, you can deliver the um, total over and assist with that and see the um, bleeding points and coagulate. Uh, it uh, um, so that it will be absolutely um, the hemostasis is maintained for that. This is again a hysteroscopic underwater cautery where uh, I have fitted with that. This is a underwater cautery bipolar resectoscope. And this bipolar resectoscope is being uh, uh, handled and manipulated. And uh, the if it is a septum, we use the uh, Collins knife. If it is a myoma, we use the um, uh, the loop. And remember, these are all cutting current for that. And you cut it. And uh, when there is a uh, when there is a, you see the septum is a big septum where it is being cut from one end to the other. And uh, if there is a myoma, there are always this is a fibrous septum. Usually, it doesn't bleed. But in a myoma, there occurs bleeding from the uh, surface where simultaneously you apply coagulation mode, a blend mode, where you coagulate and uh, change the current from the cutting, pure cutting to the uh, coagulation current so that the sealing is there and the bleeding will be less for that. So this is how you do a hysteroscopic surgery with the normal saline, with the bipolar resectoscope and uh, no more people are using the monopolar um, with the glycine, with the inherent risk of glycine toxicity of giving an ammonia toxicity and even fatal uh, complications and intraoperative, many of the intraoperative deaths have been reported for that. So 
with that we have almost abolished this uh, underwater cautery with that this is again a case where my my uterus which is being uh, excised and see if there is a bleeding we just uh, apply just touch it at that point with the touch it at that point with the coagulation and the bleeding is solved for that so that is why we, and this is another um, another case of uh, the um, transcervical section of the septum where the broad septum set up septum is very difficult to cut it with the scissor it's always advisable to use the current now coming to the vulva the sub surgery this is a case of uh, hemangioma vulva the use of this particularly is important because there is a hemangioma we expect a lot of bleeding and here the place for uh, uh, the coagulation i think the electro surgery is very very important and uh, you just uh, extrusion of the hemangioma vulva it is cutting a lot of problem for the patient patient is being referred uh, and uh, they everybody uh, was apprehending about the bleeding post of bleeding but i said that yes after giving an incision uh, the use of uh, the forceps and particularly the bipolar is a bipolar use of bipolar thing can really solve the problem and uh, the unipolar can cut it this is a unipolar cutting uh, electrode and uh, and when there is a bleeding we just catch it with the bipolar as now demonstrated and uh, when there is a bleeding you as you just coagulate with the bipolar the sealing is much more the tissue effect is least and uh, the the inherent uh, deeper penetration and uh, damage to the uh, the collateral tissues will be least for that and that completes the procedure of uh, the vulval surgery for that so various uh, vulval and vaginal surgery can be done with that and the energy sources are required for that and then you can know that is completed for that this is a case of barton recurrent barton cyst recurrent barton cyst four times this is there and here it is come with the barton sepsis and i decide not for marsupialization for for the uh, enucleation for the cyst excision and the whole cyst can be excised and remember the deeper part is the deeper part is closely buried inside and therefore there is a chance of more of bleeding and that can be tackled either by suture or by this but this is very simple and use of this bipolar uh, forceps will really solve our problem to a great extent for that now this is a vaginal septum this is a vaginal septum and a large septum in the vagina where this is uh, earlier we are using to cut it and with the suture and all that now with this facilities available this is a bipolar mar clamp which is there and mar clamp uh, is just she seals it and seals it and then we can do the procedure we can cut it with that after sealing and it is absolutely uh, vascular while cutting and the cutting is there with the mar clamp this is the the mar cut the open seizure having a coagulation current and cutting current for that also this is a seizure designed by the uh, uh, martin and i'm using combining this mark clamp with the mark cut and doing the procedure of the vaginal septoplasty for that and uh, this goes slowly and here this is a complete uterovaginal septum and therefore the total thing after vaginal excision we can go and uh, uh, go for a histoscopic uh, receptor septoplasty and here the seizure can help that yes for introduction of the receptoscope you can help the seizure is cutting part of the septum which is there in the close to the external loss and then uh, in the cervical part we can cut this with the current and then introduce uh, your histoscope and do the rest of the procedure of uh, uh, the um, uh, septum intrauterine so the complete the septum of the vagina and uh, uterus can be dealt with with the, with the power and then this uh, um, tcrs i have already shown but this is again a tcrs which uh, after the procedures combining with that we can do it it's a complete vaginal vaginal it's not very uncommon we see very often and the results are very good uh, rewarding uh, results we can find it with that and now we can find that putting the hysteroscope with the collins knife with the bipolar i think uh, we can do that job you can see the septum after a few minutes of irrigation and clearing of the fluid and then do the procedure you can see the septum very well and uh, do the septoplasty till end
this is again uh, another vaginal septum where i have used with the marsil of my design which i have just uh, with the cotter and this is a very easy procedure and uh, uh, very easy and uh, with uh, uh, least timing we can finish the complete the procedure with a minimum time ever possible with a good hemostasis for that way back in uh, 2010 this is the picture which i found it for that so this is a very important vaginal surgery and all that now common thing common thing about the cauterization electro cauterization either a contact mode or a non contact mode this is a contact mode i am using it touching the diathermy uh, ball into it and then doing the procedure and pre completing the procedure for that and this is another which is a non contact mode you can see the sparkling current there is a 1 to 2 mm gap between the electrode and the tissue and the current sparkles sparkle and all that so this a uh, jumping current which uh, is being adjusted and the modulator and the electrosurgical uh, unit as the function of the spark current and this spark current uh, you apply it so that the current is flowing at a distance and there is a gap of few millimeters from the electrode to the tissue contact this is a non contact mode and that causes a vaporization and treatment of the electrosurgery of the cervix and the erosion which is very common day in and day out which were using with electrocautery earlier now which have switched over to this particular innovative things for that and now this is a this is another soft cot uh, in a vaginal hysterectomy in a vaginal hysterectomy we usually do not use the Uh, unipolar, but this is unipolar to cut it. Usually, normally many people uh, use it by scissor. I also use it by normal uh, blade. And then only thing is that I use always with the vessel sealer. Always with the vessel sealer since 2005. This is this is I've used on one side. I've used the scaleless Martin um, IQ cut, and where the sealing and coagulation the same sitting, whereas in the other. i have used the mark lamp convenient the advantage this is this side this side i have used the iq you can see the coagulation and on tracing the cutting will be there for that coagulation is very good the only limitation sub is that the electrode length is very small i have suggested that this length is not feasible it's not very good for vaginal hysterectomy you increase the length of this so that we can do more and better for that so they are trying to find out and very soon they are going for a new design of this iq specially meant for the vaginal hysterectomy for that but the sealing is very good and the cutting is also very good with this instrument particularly for marker so so one side i have just demonstrated this mark lamp iq marker iq and the other side the conventional uh, the mark lamp which i will the this is the conventional mark lamp which uh, schematic uh, representation of that where you coagulate and cut it with the scissor for that and therefore the same thing with the other side this is the thing which i am using the mark lamp I, iq the main advantage is that for a it can the electrode or uh, is about 2.5 to 3 cm length so that a good amount of very quickly we can seal it and good sealing can be done the only thing is that you can cut, you have to cut it after that that is the only thing otherwise there is no difference and we can do the procedure whole procedure vaginal hysterectomy with this one since last 15 16 years we are used to these procedures and i was too i'm very happy that my uh, students are doing much better use of this electricity and doing very very difficult vaginal surgery for pretty vaginal hysterectomy using this instrument this has many advantages of that is the tissues uh, the making a tissues making a suture at the deeper area accessible area, inaccessible area and it's very difficult we can do more complex procedure like an oliparous individual previous cesarean and large uterus can be very well adapted with that even the sulping ophorectomy that next cell removal can be much better with that so this side one side i've used the marcart iq the other side i've used the uh, mark lamp and the whole procedure i have delivered it with that and this is one procedure of vaginal hysterectomy by the vessel sealer by the vessel sealer for that and uh, the whole part uh, is there uh, after that the upper pedicle the upper pedicle you can use it with that or is better that i always deliver it by the clamps and deliver it by the clamps 
but not suturing that clamps we get a space in between and after that you just again put the same uh, uh, mark clamp vessel sealer to coagulate it and complete the procedure for that and even vaginal the sulping ophorectomy is much more easier in this procedure than the suture where it is very difficult in the suture procedures because of the space because of the level and all that this is how we do the procedure of vaginal hysterectomy and uh, this is the pedicle which again has to be coagulated for that this is again a coagulated for that and uh, then the vault has to be closed so these tricks are very uh, the time the procedure the simplicity everything has favored the use of the uh, sutureless hysterectomy as well so this again i am using this mark and uh, the mark clamp for that remember this high upper pedicle one thing i will just uh, from my own experience i'm sprinkling this saline so there is a local heat generated here two things you make it clear that one uh, pad one one uh, uh, in the sponge holder you just retract the uh, bowel bowel should not come under view and for that purpose you retract it to the uh, with the one instrument and the gauze piece and see under vision this is to be there otherwise you uh, touch it with the area but for the for the temperature to cool down we are just spraying the saline so that the upper pedicle doesn't uh, touch the upper part of the uh, bowel and causing indirect injury at that that is an appearance which we i have faced it i have faced one complications and that's why i will advise that you do this procedure vision must be good you must be very sure where you are applying and a pack should be given and uh, pushing the bowel up so that it doesn't come you can see the pack which is there above above it so that it doesn't come in that contact the the pack this uh, the sin and then you can do the procedure with that procedure so these are some of the precautions which is very important this is again a hysterectomy vaginal hysterectomy using my marsil with the cotter with the cotter and marsil again no need of uh, the scissor which is there with the same 10 mm thing uh, you just uh, do it and uh, with the mechanical cotter you complete the procedure of hysterectomy this is also one of the alternative which is very important with the instrument of the um, vessel sealer with the cotter for that now this is a um, slide to show that yes a video of doing a pulp um, sulping ophorectomy people say that sulping ophorectomy is not possible and if at all you are require you have to do a laparoscopy no it's not that you can do it that the first step is holding this is coagulating the uh, the round ligament same thing when you are going for abdominal you just uh, release the round ligament first so after the round ligament is being released then the infant developed pelvic is being really uh, found for that and this is very easy it's not a very difficult procedure and uh, just just see that now the infant developed pelvic will be approachable the ovary can be seen the tubes can be seen now and you catch hold of that and now you can see the clear ovary and the tube and again a pack should be given a, a mop should be there small mop should be there with the pushing the intestine above and the uh, infant developed pelvic is very clearly seen and it's not a very difficult procedure and uh, only thing is that you have to sprinkle the water to cool down because we do not know how much uh, uh, local heat is generated on this pedicle and that might touch the uh, part of the intestine and then can cause a problem and that's why this is important for that and uh, after that blanching and all that auto sensing device we know that this is complete and cut the tissues and it's absolutely dry so sulping ophorectomy is not a very difficult procedure for that now this is a case of vault prolapse the pelvic organ prolapse the vault prolapse here there are some restrictions people say that cautery there could be damage to the um bowel bladder urinary bladder but remember if you are using a bipolar current the unipolar is i don't prefer to use the unipolar but uh, go through the proper cleavage number one go through the proper cleavage and uh, uh, before that you can do a hydrodissection and all that but still there is a lot of bleeding in occurring in that and this is the best way just uh, with the bipolar forceps you can just coagulate 
and complete the business. So there is a place for uh, the energy sources, particularly in a case of the vaginal prolapse and uh, all cases of vaginal prolapse can be dealt with with that. And there is no danger uh, of injuring the bladder out of it also. This is my routine procedure for that. Now, about the complications, about the risks, I, run, I will share uh, about three of my complications which I faced in related to the electrosurgical device. This is a case of 48 years, para 2, Mahima uterus, 16 weeks, underwent vaginal hysterectomy with vessel sealer, no intraoperative problem, discharged on third post-op day, presented on sixth post-op day with pain abdomen, abdominal distension, rigidity, tenderness. I had given antibiotics, did it, PC, DLC, everything, CBC and everything on conservative management with the IV fluids and the antibiotics didn't improve after 24 hours. Raised TLC, sonography evidence of free fluid in peritoneal cavity. And therefore, I planned for exploratory laparotomy in that. So this is a case where I was suspecting something. Mm -hmm. And you see, I've done the la exploratory laparotomy and what I found in that. There is a there is a fluid, uh, I slowly I've gone, there is an adhesion, recent adhesion with that. And there is a plenty of fluid, mixed colored fluid, which is there in the peritoneal cavity. The gut are matted and see there are uh, fluid uh, containing pus and all that. It appears that it is a pus. And here, following hysterectomy, if there is something, think about the uh, involvement of the gut. And detailed uh, uh, examination of the gut has to be done for that. And any suspicious injury has to be found out for that. And uh, um, that, so oh, examination of the gut, there was a little adhesion, but with the manual separation, the gut could be uh, released for that. And now I could find that uh, in the intestine, in the small gut, there is a small uh, rent. And that rent is mainly because uh, uh, we can find that I, could, I will show you the rent uh, exploring the intestines from top to bottom and separating the adhesions for that. And uh, ultimately, uh, a small rent uh, could be found out. But uh, uh, therefore, I said that absolutely everything has to be. Now you can find the rent here, a small rent. And this rent, a small rent in this small gut. Um, I, I thought uh, that uh, it cannot be by touch of the uh, instruments for that. The touch of the instrument could be one factor, but most probably this is indirect heat transmission from the upper pedicle, which is there. And since that, this was way back in 2007, this was the one case I have got it. And from since that time onwards, the sprinkling of the water, cooling of the tissues in the upper pedicle, I routinely employed and avoided this particular incidence. So these are some of the uh, lessons learned, which you see that yes, uh, those who say that we do not have any complications, uh, they, I don't believe that they are surgeons and they are the liars. So you learn from your own mistake and then uh, correct yourself. And therefore, since that time, I'm very cautious that during surgery, you just see that the uh, it's not a blind surgery. You must see that what is structures you are handling and uh, uh, there is, should not be a transmission. So this particular case, transmission of heat from the uh, heated tissues of infundula pelvic and touching the healthy intestine could be the factor for that. Patient has an odd eventful recovery and uh, therefore thermal injury direct as well as indirect could be seen with the vessel sealer. And retracting the bowel, good light source, meticulous application of electrode and cooling down the tissue uh, is very important. It could avoid the problem. Patient underwent VH should improve day by day, hour by hour, and minute by minute, all minimal invasive surgery, that is the principle. If the patient doesn't uh, improve day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, after minimal invasive surgery, you think uh, twice before uh, leaving the patient in conservative management. And she needs intervention for that. And the right intervention could solve the problem. It's a complication too. 46 years, para 2, both LSES, uterus 10 weeks, abnormal uterine bleeding, underwent VH with vessel sealer. Uneventful intrapartum and post intraoperative and post op period presented on 12th post op day with constant leakage of urine. And on examination, I find the voltage healthy, urine leaking, diagnosed as ureteral vaginal fistula by swab test, and therefore plan for ureteric cannulation. In here immediately, there are two options here either ureteric implantation, either open or uh, laparoscopy, or uh, a ureteric cannulation and stenting under CR. 
I always prefer that urinary convulsion and stenting. You do it under CR, and within minutes everything will be solved. And with the same few hours, patient will be relieved. It's not a very difficult procedure, but at times when the separation layer is more, I think the cut is there. It cannot be done. And peculiarly, the urinary injury can occur with suture and without suture also. With suture. The urinary injury which occurs, it is a complete injury and it is not amenable for stenting. And most of the urinary injury by thermal is partial and uh, it can be very well dealt with with the uh, the stenting and convulsion on the street arm, and the patient can be discharged within two hours for that. Remember this that it is not a routinely that you cannot say the rule out urinary injury either by laparoscopic surgery or by this. The vaginal surgery and thermal injury and thermal injury urinary damage can be easily attacked with the non-invasive minimal invasive procedure of stenting. So lateral thermal spread by vessel sealer, although minimal, but cannot be ruled out completely. Presents usually later in second week. Most of the cases managed by urinary stenting in contrast to suture. And complication three: 50 years postmenopausal bleeding investigated, planned for hysterectomy with the vaginal hysterectomy with the BSO with sutures. Uneventful at that time, sutures. I did it with sutures. Uneventful intrapartum period, persistent tachycardia and pallor six hours after surgery, abdominal mild distension, USG evidence of fluid and blood in the pelvis. So, immediately planned for diagnostic and therapeutic lab. There was a moderate peritoneum, hemoperitoneum with clots in the pelvis, active bleeding from the right upper pedicle in the infundibular pelvic ligament, and coagulation done, irrigation with peritoneal toileting done, uneventful post operative period. And what is the message? Post of hemorrhage, one of the common complications is hysterectomy. Meticulous attention to the vital pedicles is essential during surgery. And vessel sealer in age over suture in relatively inaccessible area and small vascular tricks in the broad ligament. Therefore, after using of the vessel sealer, I have never seen the uh, hemorrhaging part, but I have seen it before using in vessels. So, a good piece of surgery is the most important post of care, but these complications can arise and tackle that. So, what is the future in the last? Future of electrosurgical device. I want a mini generator, like a mobile, and everything can be incorporated with it. I want a cableless instrument, unnecessary cable, without cable, remote, and all that, it can be done. Efficient sealing, absolutely, we should not grasp at two, three points. One particular part, sealing, and everything is over. Touch and vanish, if you want to remove the tissue and all that. I want a touch and vanish. I was... Uh, Thinking the dream is that if there is a 30 week size uterus and put a laparoscopy on one port with a 5 mm port, another 3 mm with a high frequency needle, touch the fundus and electrosurgical device, the power improve the power, whole thing will be evaporated. And within minutes, the whole 30 weeks uterus will be turning to the P naught size. So, no cutting, no dissection, no sealing, nothing will be there for that. This could be a touch and vanish, which I wanted. List tissue damage. There should not be any tissue damage. List thermal thermal local tissue with one generator and one pencil. I can do the whole procedure, conventional procedure. And with the long pencil, laparoscopic pencil, I can do whole of the laparoscopic procedure with that. I am dreaming out of it. You touch it and everything will be there. And we don't uh, want to apply the different types of current, uh, the IQ model, the MAR clamp, the MAR seal. Just touch it and it will vanish and all that. And maximum precision should be there. Minimum damage. And at the last, for Indian scenario, for my Indian gynecologist, cost effective. Reduce the cost for the gynecologist for that. So to conclude, electrosurgical device, forerunner of all power source. Basic understanding of biophysics is essential. Basic understanding of the generators and its effect on tissue. Understanding the risks. Targeted delivery of power with precision adequate vigilance and meticulous surgical techniques is the key to success changing trends changing techniques and after few after 10 years and another person like another pc mahapatra or somebody else of my next generation could speak speak uh, talk about electrosurgical forget about electrosurgical device a new design and a future um, future uh, different uh, model different model of electrosurgical generator and equipment that will come out and give you some of the very, very enlightened talks and concept on the electrosurgical device. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much, sir. It was...
really mind boggling today like you know we were thinking that we are quite uh, up to date the things but uh, you are showing us a future so i i i caught on one line of yours like um future without future that is really cool so <laughs> i hope this uh, becomes a reality soon thank you um sir uh, there are a few queries uh, like you know as usual people won't leave you without that so i would like to read a few of them in front of you uh like there is dr manoranjan mahapatra um he's asking like what is the difference between conventional vessel sealer and radio frequency vessel sealer i think uh, there is no term called radio frequency vessel sealer the current is radio frequency uh, that's why i have clarified what is a radio frequency current and all these are radio frequency current currents yeah. there are variable uh, the trade name are different some use plasma kinetics some use vio some use uh, uh, the n seal some use uh, um, the seal safe current and all that but basically these are vessel or uh, the radio frequency current with a sealing zone that's important and all that the component of pressure and low voltage high power that should be the current for that right and dr aradhana from uttar pradesh noida she saying excellent sir you are a great teacher so i don't have to repeat for all those guys who are saying such things sir. so i think people i i could be able to teach physics <laughs> uh, apart from uh, medicine and all that and my purpose is solved because the fundamentals i want to clarify with that basic understanding of physics and the instrumentation excellent sir uh, sir this is dr bhagyalakshmi naik from uh, katar uh, asking why sometimes the tissue gets charred uh, how to prevent it and effect of charring on the tissue healing now effect of charring on the tissue healing you know it that if the healing will be defective very difficult the tissue getting charring is that you apply more the current for a more period of time and if there is a vessel you are not catching the particular bleeding points along with the bleeding points if other tissues are grasped the charring will be more if you are instead of a tweezer if you are using another uh, forceps we having a broad point the current will flow for a longer time right. and the charring will be there for that uh question from dr d k ganesh bhatta asking sir can you explain about how to adjust the settings on electrosurgery generator in different situations well basically basically for open cases and monopolar uh, and bipolar uh, we uh, there is a difference 40 to 60 is major thing and uh, in bipolar also in laparoscopy is 60 but in vessel sealer the instruments has got different types say for example i have already told kls martin has a g1 g2 g3 setting the alan has got the l1 l2 l3 l4 l5 setting but maximum within 100 to 150 don't exceed for that with minimum current if you are getting a desired effect keep it in that 100 to 150 but in a um, uh, hysteroscopic resection it takes about 180 current for that otherwise uh, the current strength should be as minimum as possible for that 40 watts in bipolar normal will be well 40 to 60 watts will be available maximum it's uh, enough for that sir and how long you must have been using electrosurgical like when when did you start which year i have i have uh, uh, used uh, um, i think electro cautery before electro surgery i have used electro cautery mm -hmm. i have purchased one electro cautery machine uh, way back in 1979 uh, 80 oh my gosh and used it used it at that time diathermy was not available and it took uh, it costed me 200 rupees to bring that and it is now in the museum for that so that's oh. a, <laughs> and after that i used to uh, tie it uh, from the incision every time with the uh, plain catgut bicycle uh, was not there at that time right. plain catgut was the major thing we are using having a tying and all that Good and uh, yeah. <laughs> um, then i have used uh, in 1980s uh, i have used uh, um, letter part of uh, Uh, early part of 80s i have used only unipolar monopolar even uh, i remember uh, in uh, 90s also early part of 90 when laparoscopy came laparoscopy bipolar came later on i used a lot of cases of hysterectomy also laparoscopy hysterectomy with monopolar also i know that there is a risk of that but yeah. i have gone through all adversities so unipolar then the bipolar 
then 2005 onwards, I have used the vessel sealer for that. So I, I remember when Martin brought three machines, I was very curious about it. And Martin engineers came from Germany to this place and uh, they sat without me for observing the surgery. I gave the different designs. I carved, changed the module of the hand instruments for that, bipolar sealer, and uh, different exchange of ideas between engineers and doctors could solve the purpose for that. And 2005 onwards, I have forgotten suture and I'm always uh, using this as a vessel sealer device. Excellent, sir. Dr. Sanjay Navli is asking another question. Yes, uh, yes sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, there is a question from Dr. Bhakti Lakshmi Nayak from Katak. Yeah. And uh, she is asking that Mark Lamp is better coagulator than Marker and don't find Marker as a good device for the vaginal hysterectomy. Well, Market uh, IQ, that's why I told, I compared these two, two halves. On one side, this is, I use the Marcot, and other side, Mark Lamp. Mark Lamp, I say that Mark Lamp in view of uh, the length is superior to the Marcot. And therefore, if the length of the Marcot, they are designing, I think within a very short time, they will bring in the new design of the Marcot where the length will be more for that. And therefore, if that is so, I think... Uh, the advantage of again using the Caesar doesn't arise for that also. Right, sir. And uh, <clears throat> Dr. Vijay Lakshmi, Kandaswami, again, I mean, countless number of people again saying uh, excellent, mesmerizing talk, visual treat. So, <laughs> so <laughs> this is all, sir, about the. Thank you. Thank you very much. After the corona is getting over, we will again go travel, physical, and all that. I think uh, that's why the main purpose of my episode today is to show and uh, how important it is which we are not concerned about. Even I, myself also, have uh, understood, not understood electrosurgery for long, long years. Right. And uh, I queried, I find, still I am in many, in some of the aspect, I still have a doubt on that also. Maybe that after using some, yeah. uh, different varieties, uh, even people cannot explain me in some of the basic, but basic fundamentals, I think one must be very clear about it. Very Understanding true, the machines is important for that. Also. Very true, sir. Very, very true. So, sir, the future you have shown about the like uh, cableless instruments, like that is really ultimate thing. Like, you know, today we are thinking how to charge a mobile without cable. So, that cableless instruments coming in, this will be a really, really great change of uh, you know, I dream. I dream. I don't know yeah. whether it will be reality or not. Never know, sir. Okay, sir, there is another query from uh, Dr. Bhagi Lakshmi only asking, uh, now, uh, is that the patient should improve day by day also on open surgery? Uh, well, uh, open sur any surgery patient should improve. That's all right. But open versus minimal invasive surgery, there is a difference. In minimal invasive surgery, we say that the post-operative recovery is much better than the open surgery. And therefore, when we are going for a minimal invasive surgery like laparoscopic surgery or non-invasive surgery like vaginal surgery, this concept I remember every uh, the patient should improve day by day, hour by hour and minute by minute. If they do not improve, think twice and think about the cause for that also. Right, sir. Sir, uh, now this is a uh, very important query which has come from... Uh, uh, Dr. Kandaswami again asking like the, <clears throat> um, if you have a secondary hemorrhage after using the, these electrosurgical instruments uh, bleeding about 7 to 10 days later so how, how to handle no sec 7 to 10 days later bleeding means it's a secondary hemorrhage either there is a collection of blood particularly in vaginal institute what happens there is a collection of blood um, around the bladder so I always tell to prevent this during surgery, be very meticulous to see that in there is no small tweaks in the bladder. The collection occurs in the bladder and there is a coffee matoma for that and bleeding occurs. And just coagulate with a simple bipolar forceps. Don't say that bleeding will stop. Just coagulate with that and I think that is a preventive aspect for that. So otherwise, um, and particularly bleeding, uh, I have told, that when we are using the electrosurgical procedures from the from below, from the mechanod till the upper pedicle, we are separating the broad ligand from the uterus. That is the principle of hysterectomy. 
you separate it from the attachment. And we know that there are a uterine artery which is very vascular, but apart from the uterine artery, in between uterine artery and uh, the upper pedicle, in the broad ligament, there could be small twigs. And in, in suture, what happens? The small twigs escape. And where, whereas if you apply in the clamp, mark clamp, both the main as well as small twigs are also coagulated with that. Yes. That's a major advantage of that. Right, sir. So <clears throat> that's that's all about the queries till now. But uh, one one query uh, which everybody is asking: When are you going to visit our town? So, Doctor <laughs> Doctor uh, Ashish Shah is inviting you to Vadodara. Oh, Ashish, my favorite. I had operated there in your place, Ashish, and I will <laughs> definitely go. Right, and he's asking he's a query also. He's asking a query also. Uh, saying that, uh, uh, sir, do you think that uh, electrosurgical principles uh, should be a part of routine teaching in UG and PG curriculum? Absolutely. Now you see, in all the textbooks also, electrosurgery uh, is a part and I feel that it should be devoted. For it. it's a, that's why from the beginning I told that it's not that switch on and switch off. You should know about the when the technology, when the gun at the time, when uh, the surgeon himself updates his own skill, surgical yeah. skill. Now, the change is that the team and tool is important. So, understanding the team is important. Under understanding the tool is important. important. I yeah. must understand my assistant also. Sure. I must understand my anesthetist also. I must uh, understand the machines and tools also. Correct. Correct. Very true. Very true. Right, sir. So, I let me just once again see. Uh, yeah. So, I think, sir, that is the Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for your presence. The urological and society good, good is waiting. Idea. The urological society, I was just apprehending Bhupesh that uh, whether I'll be free or not because every time it crosses the nine o'clock and all that. Yes. So uh, they, have, uh, they have another uh, um, assignment for me, the urological society of India. Uh, I have to join it at 8.15. Thank you very much for inviting oh, me. Sir. Thank you for your presence. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, support, please stop recording and online streaming. Uh, the recording has stopped. Alat sir? Yes. Alat sir?